Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. Nice to see everyone again. And make sure you have hit the subscribe button for more informative chemistry video. And for this video, we'll talk about the preparation of carbonyl compound. How can we produce carbonyl compound? There are a few methods to prepare carbonyl compound, but today we'll discuss only oxidation of alcohol. And we can oxidize two types of alcohol to produce your carbonyl compound. The first one is your primary alcohol. We can oxidize your primary alcohol to become aldehyde by using mild oxidizing agent. Knowing that your primary alcohol is a carbon that holding OH and holding one R group. The rest is your hydrogen over here. And we can change it to your aldehyde to become a double bond OH holding the same R group. So that is the oxidation of primary alcohol to produce aldehyde. The second alcohol that we can oxidize is your secondary alcohol, knowing that your secondary alcohol is the carbon that holding OH, holding two R group, that is your secondary alcohol, undergo oxidation will produce ketone, and the oxidizing agent that we use over here in this oxidation is the strong oxidizing agent. And the ketone that we produce will be C double bond O holding 2R group. So that is the ketone that we produce from the oxidation of secondary alcohol. So bear that in mind to produce carbonyl, one of the method is oxidation of alcohol and oxidation of alcohol, we can only discuss about the oxidation of primary alcohol and also secondary alcohol. And the most important thing, your primary alcohol must be using mild oxidizing agent. Secondary alcohol can be using strong and mild oxidizing agent. So let's start with mild oxidation of primary alcohol. So mild oxidation will definitely be using mild oxidizing agent. And the only mild oxidizing agent that we learn is PCC in CH2Cl2, knowing that your CH2Cl2 is your inert solvent. So remember, mild oxidizing agent, there is only one option, PCC in inert solvent. So let's see what happened to our primary alcohol is your primary alcohol will become aldehyde by using PCC in inert solvent. What is happening is your primary alcohol over here, the carbon that holding the OH attached to only one carbon group. So that is your primary alcohol. And this primary alcohol will be holding two hydrogen. And we will focus on the entire carbon group that holding the OH. And when we have the presence of PCC in inert solvent, what will happen? The OH will go out, and then one of the hydrogen that attached to the carbon will also go out. And what do we replace that with? We will replace that with a C double bond O. So you can see that the rest of the thing that doesn't change, your R group and your hydrogen, shall remain unchanged. But the OH and the H that removed will be then replaced by C double bond O. And that is your aldehyde group. So it's proven that when your primary alcohol undergo mild oxidation by using PCC in inert solvent, you will produce your aldehyde. By removing the OH and the hydrogen on the same carbon, you replace by C double bond O. So that is your aldehyde. Alright? I hope that is very clear for you on how your primary alcohol can become aldehyde by using mild oxidizing agent. So let's look at some example over here. That is my primary alcohol. So the carbon that holding OH is only attached to one R group. And we will focus on this entire group. Expand this group. You know that the two hydrogen right now is actually like this. So expand that group. 
And when this primary alcohol reacts with the mild oxidizing agent, which is your PCC in CH2Cl2, what will happen? The OH will be removed, one of the H will be removed. And the rest of the thing that doesn't change, the rest of the group that doesn't change will remain there. Just recopy. And the carbon that holding the OH right now is losing the OH and one of the hydrogen replaced by double bond O. The hydrogen that doesn't involve in the reaction shall remain unchanged. And that is your aldehyde. So your primary alcohol react with your mild oxidizing agent will produce your aldehyde. See that? Your carbonyl compound. Another example over here, you have your presence of your primary alcohol again. So we know that in this skeletal structure, this is actually a carbon. And this carbon right now holding only two bonds. One, two. So this carbon is actually holding another two hydrogen. Expand the hydrogen. Okay. And when this primary alcohol, the carbon that holding OH is a primary carbon, react with the mild oxidizing agent PCC in inert solvent, what will happen guys? We know that the OH will be removed one of the hydrogen will be removed. The rest of the group that doesn't change, you basically recopy. So the carbon still holding the hydrogen here. And the OH that you remove and the hydrogen that you remove will be then replaced by a double bond O. So you can see again your primary alcohol undergo mild oxidizing process. What will happen is aldehyde being produced with only one condition. You must only use mild oxidizing agent. So to change your primary alcohol to become aldehyde, you must use your PCC in inert solvent. Simple, easy. And that is the first alcohol that we can oxidize to become your carbonyl compound, which is aldehyde. While the second alcohol that can change into carbonyl compound is your secondary alcohol. Your secondary alcohol can undergo strong oxidizing process to produce your carbonyl compound of ketone. Let's see what is the strong oxidizing agent. The strong oxidizing agent that you can use is KMNO4 H plus heat or K2Cr2O7 H plus heat. So you have two options over here. You can either use your KMNO4 or you can use your K2Cr2O7. Both will give you the same results, okay? Knowing that, your secondary alcohol will become ketone with the presence of your strong oxidizing agent. Knowing that your secondary alcohol is a carbon that holding OH attached to two R group. So that is your secondary alcohol. And we will focus on the entire carbon that holding the OH. And when it reacts with any one of your strong oxidizing agent, KMNO4H plus heat over here, what will happen? The OH will be removed. The H will be removed. The group that doesn't undergo any changes will remain there. The OH and the H that you remove will be then substituted by a double bond, O. And you can see that you produce a ketone where you have your C double bond O sitting in between carbon group, in between your alkyl group. Okay, simple, easy. Let's look at the first example that I have over here. You can see that this carbon right now is a secondary alcohol because it's attached to two carbon. So when it attached to two carbon, this guy is a secondary. So it's a secondary alcohol. And we expand the secondary alcohol. The hydrogen is actually attached like this. Focus on the entire group of the carbon that holding the OH. 
and this secondary alcohol right now react with your strong oxidizing agent. Let's say I'm using K2Cr2, O7, H plus heat, your potassium dichromate in acidic condition with the presence of heat. And ladies and gentlemen, what happened? OH is removed, H is removed. Everything shall remain the same for those that does not involve in the changes. And the only thing that change is your H that remove and your OH that remove, substituted by a double bond, O. And you realize that you form a ketone because your C double bond O right now sitting in between carbon and carbon. And that is your ketone. So it's proven that your secondary alcohol when undergo oxidation, you will produce ketone. Another example. So this carbon is the carbon that holding the OH group. And as you can see, this carbon is attached to carbon group and carbon group. So this guy will be a secondary carbon. So you will have your secondary alcohol. Checking on this carbon itself, the carbon right now holding only three bond. One, two, three. So according to all the rules that we have learned, every carbon deserves four bonds. Therefore, one more bond is actually your hydrogen to complete the four bond in the skeletal. And your secondary alcohol right now undergoes strong oxidizing process. Let's say I'm using potassium permanganate in acidic condition with the presence of heat. And guys, what happened? Focus on the entire carbon that holding the OH, remove the OH, remove the H so that I can substitute with double bond O. The rest of the group that doesn't change shall remain unchanged. Just recopy that. All right, that is your CH3, don't forget this. And then the carbon right now holding double bond O. Because we replace the OH that we remove and the H that we remove with your double bond O. So the carbon that holding the OH and the carbon that holding the H over here will be the carbon that holding the double bond O. And that again is your ketone because you have your C double bond O in between carbon. So it's proven again, your secondary alcohol right now produce your carbonyl compound ketone. So remember, your secondary alcohol over here can produce carbonyl ketone. All right, simple, easy. So as a conclusion for this video, we can prepare your carbonyl compound, whether it's an aldehyde, or is a ketone by using one method, which is oxidation of alcohol. But we need to oxidize two types of alcohol to produce aldehyde and to produce ketone. So to produce aldehyde, you must oxidize primary alcohol by using mild oxidizing agent to produce aldehyde. While for the secondary alcohol, you can produce ketone by using strong oxidizing agent. And that's it. Simple. So I hope this video helps you to understand on how the oxidation alcohol works to prepare carbonyl. And if the videos help you, do like the video and share it with your friends. And remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.